Okay, so we have pretty much completed our REST API development in Golang using Echo Framework. I'll try to cover pretty much all the aspects, all the important aspects of uh, the REST API development. Of course, uh, there have been places where I have cut corners, but I haven't actually done it at the cost of explaining some basic or some really essential concepts. Of course, you can go deeper into it. You can modularize the code more uh, based on the requirements. You could have a bigger size of the code base, but that's all around the same concepts that we talked about, right? So now I, uh, as a final step, or as a, some of the final steps, we are going to write a Docker file for this. Okay, and uh, eventually the idea is to actually put our application in a container and uh, deploy it on some container hosting environment such as AWS, ECS or something, okay? Uh, we'll see if we can get that far, but for now, let's just uh, uh, see what we can do in terms of Docker file, okay? Now, you know that it's a Go application, so eventually when you write a Go code, you can build it into a single binary, right? So when I fire this command, for example, okay, so it's gonna do the compilation and I have this main.go file here. If you check out the size of the main.go file, that alone is 18 MB, okay? And that is because uh, 18 MB of file, uh, uh, that, that's our binary because that has got all the dependencies. It's got uh, uh, other Go specific, Go runtime specific things such as scheduler and garbage collection and all the stuff, right? So it's all embedded in it. And the way you run it is just like this, just like you execute any other command. So when I do this, it has already started my server, all right? And now I already have the database running so I can pretty much fire the commands on it that I want. Alright, for example, if I, I can fire the get command, there's no product, I can put a product, so there's invalid expired JWT and that's fine, so it's working, right? I don't have the token now, that's why it's, it's failing. So uh, the idea to actually build a Docker application eventually is a very simple thing. We, we start from a very basic image and we, we just find a way to put this main uh, binary into that docker and as an entry point we just run that main file just like we did here, right? So basically uh, that's all we want to do in our docker file so but it the, the actual docker file is gonna be a little more complicated than that and I'll just uh, show it to you. All right, so but for now, let me delete this main file. All right, so uh, that will clean up some space. And uh, uh, surprisingly, this gene.bin file is 18 MB, and I think that's because of the main, dot main binary file that I created, but I'm good ignoring it anyway. So, anyway, so I have gone ahead and written the Docker file because so I'm gonna run through the steps of it. So it's gonna be a multi-stage Docker file. So when I say multi-stage, so there's gonna be one stage where we use one particular image to build from and we use that image to only build our binary, okay? And then we use the same stage, stage one, into the next stage. We use the stage one's output, the binary file that we generated, into the stage two to create our Docker image that only has that binary to run. That way, the size of our container image is very small. It is very easy to start up or stop or pull it and download it from elsewhere, right? So that's, that's the intention, okay? So I'm starting with the base image that is Golang Alpine. So it's, it's very small in size. And I'm calling the stage builder, all right? Because I'll be using it later in stage two. So I have to refer to the stage and its output so I have to have some reference to so that is why the name is Builder. Uh, there's some Golang specific variables that everybody uses in, in Do Golang's Docker file. So I am also using them right here. Go operating system that I want to deploy to is Linux, but you can change it to Windows or 
Darwin and the architecture model. All right. Uh, the working directory now inside this alpine image i'm now uh, assigning establishing that this is going to be a working directory so right now the next set, set of operations or commands would be fired under this current working directory that is slash build okay so if it's not there it's gonna create it uh, so first of all i'm copying over this go mode and go some files go mode is our model dependency file so units for all the things that we are using in our project and go.sum file is actually the checksum file so when you are downloading the dependencies there are some checksums that uh, the go module uh, tool checks against okay obviously to make sure that you're getting the right version and that nothing has been changed all right so i'm copying both the files over and now that i have go mode i'm actually running go mode download so it's going to download all the dependencies so in my image right there, I've got all the dependencies that I need downloaded, all right? And then I copy my whole source code from my local machine to the image. So everything that's here, everything will be copied over to this, okay? Uh, and uh, then we are building the binary file. So we just do go build minus o main. All right, so just the command that we ran here a few minutes ago. And this main is, keep in mind, it's getting created under slash build, which is a working directory. So that that's our first stage complete. We wanted the binary, we got it. Okay, so we start with the second stage, and this time with scratch. So in the start with scratch, it's pretty much like starting with a very, the, the bare, it, it's, it's the, it's like a blank slate. The most blank slate in docker right so uh, you start with that and uh, then you keep some arguments here so if you want to pass some arguments right now would be the good time okay so basically I need some environment variables so if you remember that in a config file we have this configs and we need to provide these values so for development environments I was going with DB host as local host but eventually on production it's gonna be some host on the same cloud or elsewhere all right or maybe in the data center that's gonna have something specific there right so some of these uh, or all of these you can actually take them out and put them into the docker file to be supplied as additional arguments so what you eventually want to do is you want to be running this docker file or this uh, docker build from this docker file from an environment where this kind of environment variables and their values are secretly available okay for example uh, let's see if you're using aws and aws has this service called secret manager where you can store those secrets and in your runtime engine where, where you are running this docker build come up, uh, operation you can get the secret file uh, secret uh, va uh, values and then use them here as environment variables should so pass them during the build operation bear in mind that this session is not about docker and how it works so docker is a big topic in itself so i'm not going to cover that so i assume that you know what arg and n here are supposed to do all right so i i expect some arguments and then i use the same arguments as uh, the values of my environment variables so argument is something that you pass during build operation. Environment is something that during the runtime of the container, though these environment variables will be set and they'll assume certain values. And that's exactly what we need as part of our config objects values, right? So these are environment values, right? And back to the Docker file. And uh, after that, I actually copy from my stage one image. So from stage one, uh, that was builder, as it is mentioned here, I copy the output or whatever, I, I copy the specific thing that was there, the slash build slash main, I copy it and put it under the root folder of my scratch image, all right? Now, because it's a binary, okay, it can be run on any machine, right? Uh, it's specifically a Linux based uh, based on this operating system. It's been created and this binary will actually run on any Linux machine. 
and I'm exposing the port and as an entry point I just execute this main all right so because it's in the root path so that's where it is and I execute it so th that's all we need all right for making sure the docker file is there okay now you can go ahead and actually create the docker uh, image so the command for that would be something like build minus t okay so build command and minus t and then you give the name of your user id that you created on user uh, on docker hub you give this uh, image some id uh, some name so for me it is chronix chronix corp and if you are going to be updating it frequently you might as want to give the version and then you give dot okay and dot would be that go find the docker file here in the in the directory where I'm executing this command now so wherever you're executing this command the docker file should be there okay and at the same point you want to pass your build arguments as well okay so the way you do that is you use the flag build args and then for example db host is equal to localhost all right and now you want to pass the second build argument so you have to mention the flag again okay this kind of uh, not intuitive sometimes but you have to use the flag separately for each argument you can't actually just uh, concatenate them chain them uh, you know back to back so this is going to be something like 27017 all right so this is what you would usually do and you'll get the docker image okay I'm not gonna go ahead with that operation. I have something else here to show actually instead and that is uh, docker compose. Okay, so docker compose allows you to run uh, two separate docker containers together in a specific environment so that if you got more than two containers talking to each other then you would want to consider something like docker compose on a local system and then you got Kubernetes uh, actually on a production kind of system. But if you want to just run it locally and test it out uh, then this is the way so because we have two things right we have the mongo container mongo image and our service container so this is the docker uh, compose yaml file uh, version is important so make sure that version is 2.2 if there is something more if it is greater than this and I think the behavior might change so these are my services which are the tronics and mongo okay and both of them can communicate with each other over the names so uh, in the Tronics application my uh, host name for connecting to MongoDB would be Mongo whatever is mentioned here okay so these are two uh, services the Tronic service is something that I'm going to build I, I don't have an image yet okay so I'm just going to give it the container name so that I can identify I'm going to build it so I give it the name of uh, the location of the file the docker file I'm going to expose 8080 port I have an environment file config dev.env because I need to pass environments right uh, so they are here okay so uh, that's that and uh, uh, you can also pass them specifically using environment uh, attribute here but there's environment file as well so this way uh, you can separately have your files in uh, for each environment such as dev stage prod uh, you could have some kind of uh, templating engine creating a docker compose file dynamically pointing to a specific environment and then it will run and create the setup for each environment so it gets really bigger and complicated when you start you know thinking of deploying it to production and having multiple environments it depends on mongo so before starting this container it will make sure that the mongo container has been pulled up I mean it's been downloaded and it's been started and the ports so the container port that's gonna be used is 8080 and the localhost port that's gonna be used is 8080 okay and that's uh, the the container port that we're exposing is 8080 all right and uh, now I can go back here 
again if I do something like this docker compose up so what it's gonna do it's going to start building the Tronix uh, container first so you see that it's executing all the steps that we have in the docker okay so I think it's gonna take some time meanwhile I wanted to show you that the, uh, the repo that we had been working on the project it is available on github okay so I'm going to put the link of that github repo in the description below but you can pretty much figure it out from the go mode so this is the github uh, link okay so if you want to try it you know temper with it go ahead and clone it or uh, you know fork it whatever right now you see that it's been uh, it's been deployed but there is a there is a reason why it is failing right now uh, that it's not able to start the mongo uh, service and that is because the port here is being used because we already have another mongo uh, container that we were using locally for our application and I'll have to stop it first okay so I'll just do this and it has uh, there was another container running and using the same port so I stopped it now if I go again so this time it's gonna start the Tronix Corp and my application has also started okay you, you see that this is from our application listening on localhost so that is coming from line 121 right so that's all the way back here in main.go line 121 okay so that's what it's printing here all right so you can try this stuff on your application on, on, on the local system and let me know how it goes so I think if we can pretty much stop here I'll, I'll try to see if we can uh, expand this issue more or if you want to if you want me to cover something specific then let me know um, and I'll try to cover it but the focus of the session uh, of this uh, particular series was to cover the echo specific REST API development part all right you'll also find that there are other frameworks like Jin in Golang and they also pretty much have the same kind of conventions so if you work on echo it should be fairly easy for you to move to Jin but not necessarily to Gorilla but it's still the same all right I hope you liked it and if you have any other suggestions or if you want to want me to cover some specific topic let me know and I'll try to get to it okay thank you